Hello everyone, welcome to ZNZ Classroom. I'm Mary, in this video, I'll be going over question 21 to 25 on the math calculator section for the SAT practice one test released by College Board. So let's get started. Well, question 21 here, it says the data in the table above were produced by a sleep researcher studying the number of dreams people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes and group Y consisted of 100 people who observed later bedtimes. If a person is chosen at random from those who recall at least one dream, what is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? So in this case, they're asking for a proportion and we know that this statement after the from tells us the denominator of the proportion because we're chosen from a group of individuals that who recall at least one dreams. So this is our denominator. And we see the table that this is zero dreams. This is one to four dreams and five or more dreams. So both the one to four dreams and five or more dreams means at least one. So we need to add a total of them, 39 plus 125, and that's gonna be our denominator. So 39 plus 125, equals to 164. Then it says, what is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? So the group Y people in these two groups gonna be our numerator, which is 11 plus 68. So 11 plus 68 equal to 79. So it's 79 over 164. And that's answer choice C. So sometimes people just calculate the denominator and chose to answer right away. In this case, it's going to be right since there's only 164 um, here and that it is 79 on top. But sometimes you probably should calculate the numerator as well, just in case some of the factors can cancel. And for example, if I have 80, for example, if I have 80 over 164, I can make it into, for example, um, 20 over 41, right? And in this case, maybe the answer choice does not uh, have the denominator of 164. So you need to be careful with that. Okay, so let's move on here. Uh, number 22, it says a table above lists the annual budgets in thousands of dollars. So this is important to know that the, the numbers is in thousand dollars in here. So basically you need to add three zeros at the end if you just say dollars. For each of six different state um, programs in Kansas from 2007 to 2010, I said, what is, uh, which of the following best at, approximates the average rate of change in annual budget for agricultural or natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2010? So what you're gonna do is you found this row over here, so that's agricultural resources, and you found the two numbers, that's 2010 and 2008. And then you do a slope basically. So I have 488106 minus 358708 divided by 2010 minus 2008. So I will get 893921 um, over 2. And I get 64. Six, uh, six, four, six, um, nine, nine, right? So, and then since this is in thousand dollars, but this one is just dollars, I have to add three zeros at end. And I found out this number is really close to six, five, zero, 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 zero. So answer choice B is correct. Next question, it says, of the following, which program's ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget is closest to the human resources program's ratio of its 20, 2007 budget to its 2010 budget. So um, let's see. So it says human resource program ratio. And here is 2007, which is this one, to its 2010 budget, which is this over here. So which one is closest to this? Um, let's just kind of estimate the ratio. This one is approximately 
four zero 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 zero. This is a proxy six zero 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 zero. This props only a two to three ratio. So which one of the other also has a two to three ratio? Um, I would say that. Let's see. Um. So this is more like a one to one ratio. That's not right. This one is more like a two to three ratio, right? The other one is not correct. That's a like a um that's not two to three because this one is pretty obvious. That start with two, that start with three, and they're pretty small, small numbers over here on the on the end. So we can approximate this two, two, three, like that. And then this is approximately three, zero, 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 zero. So answer choice B is correct. Or what you could do is just plug in the numbers, use 5921379, divide by the 4015050 on your calculator and calculate decimal, and you calculate every other inch choices with the two numbers accordingly and find out which one is the closest. Okay, next question. It says, which of the following is an equation of a circle in the XY plane with center 04 and a radius with endpoints 43? Uh, four third comma five. So since it says the center is zero comma four and the radius endpoint, we can calculate what the radius is. Um, that's going to be so. It's gonna be like this. So it's gonna be four third minus zero squared plus five minus four squared which is 16 ninth plus one. And that's gonna be 25 ninth, which is five over three. And then, you know, the number over here is actually five over three squared. So that's gonna be 25 over nine. We rule out C and D. And for A and B, since the center is four, we do Y minus four instead of Y plus four. This is just rule for this this kind of um, circle equation questions. Maybe later I will get a video if y'all would like on just the circle equations because sometimes I think people are more confused. But just remember that it's y minus the vertex um, vertex number of y over here, which is four. So it's y minus four. If I say it's negative four over here, it's going to be y plus four. So remember that for now and. Maybe later I will have a video just on that. And then remember the number over here is going to be R squared. All right, so move on to the last question. It says the equation above expresses the approximate height H in meters of a ball T seconds after it is launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? So for this question, what you could do is just set h to zero. So zero, um, let's just do zero equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 25 t. And then you can solve this using a calculator, which will into, uh, introduce you with that in a later video, or you could just do it by hand. So zero equals t. 25 minus 4.9 t. So in order to make a zero, t could be zero, which in this case, we don't want that zero. Or we could do 25 minus 4.9 t equals zero. If I subtract 25 on both sides, I got negative 4.9 t equals negative 25. And divide by negative 4.9, divide by negative 4.9, t equals. So if 25 divide, just like 25 divided 4.9 is approximately 25 divided by five. So it's just gonna be 5.0 right away, or you could actually calculate for the number. So let's just calculate for the number here. It's gonna be five, um, two, four, and five, zero. So it's 0.1, which in this case is really close to 5.0. And thank you so much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. And we will introduce, uh, we will discuss the next few questions in the later episodes. Thank you.